Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Science Grad School Coach. So today I'm gonna to be talking about your dissertation and what are the steps that you should do before you even start writing your dissertation. And if I would have known back when I was writing my dissertation, the things that I should have done before I started writing, my entire dissertation process would have been so much easier and so much less stressful. So today I'm gonna to give you three action steps that you can take in order to be able to have a more stress-free dissertation process. And none of these action steps actually include writing your dissertation, but they are super important and are part of the dissertation process. So it's still considered starting your dissertation even before you start writing it. So before I get started um, on my three action steps, I'm actually gonna tell you all about a webinar that, it, that is coming up that I'm doing all about um, starting your dissertation or your scientific dissertation. And in this webinar, I'm gonna talk to you all about how to plan out your dissertation and how to write it and how to get in the right mindset for it. And so I highly suggest that um, you sign up for that webinar. And if you're interested in registering for it, you can go to sciencegradschoolcoach.com forward slash dissertation workshop and that's where you will be able to register for that webinar happening on November 12th or you can hit the link below. So let's get into the action steps you can take. So the first action step that you should take before you ever start writing your dissertation is actually figuring out what your chapters are going to be. And so you want to know before you start writing what is your chapter one through however many chapters you're going to do to have and what is actually going to go into those chapters? What are you going to be writing about in each of those chapters and have a list of those chapters? And so one of my friends that I um, have been working with or I was working with uh, on her dissertation kept talking about I'm going to get started writing, you know, this this one chapter. But at that time, she didn't even know what her chapters were. Um, so she was super focused on this one chapter, but you can't create any form of timeline or any realistic version of when you're going to complete your dissertation if you don't even know what your dissertation is going to consist of. And so you need to focus first on what is your dissertation going to consist of? What is the list of those chapters? And so after working with her and creating a list of her, her chapters, she felt a lot more like she knew that her dissertation was actually going to be a uh, substantive and it was actually going to be worth, you know, getting a PhD because it's recognizing all of the work that she has. And she now also knows what all does she have to do before she graduates. And so if you are not, if you don't have a list of your chapters available for you, you really have no idea where you're going in your dissertation. You don't know the story of your dissertation and you don't know if it is actually substantive. Another problem that people can run into whenever they're working on their chapters is they come up with a list of their chapters and then they never run it by their advisor. And so they start working on their entire dissertation, but in the back of their mind, they can constantly question, is this actually enough for my defense? Is this actually enough to get my PhD? Am I gonna need to do more? I really don't like this chapter. I really don't think there's enough in it, but apparently I have to do it because I created this list of chapters. And so it's gonna be important for you to talk with your advisor about your list of chapters. And one of the things that can come up for people, um, especially if they are intimidated by their advisor, is they can feel like they don't want to go and talk with them about their chapters because what if they don't have all of the chapters that their advisor thinks they should have? And that is the whole point of doing this 
is that if your advisor thinks you need more chapters or knows your work and is like, well, you're, you're leaving out this chapter or this chapter, then whenever you're going into writing, you know that you need to go and include those chapters into your dissertation. There can also be questions of what if the work I have is not enough for a dissertation and I don't want to go to my advisor and them thinking I have all this work and then I actually don't and now they don't actually think I should write my dissertation. And if that's what you're coming up against and if that's really truthful and you don't actually have enough work to be writing your dissertation, then maybe you shouldn't be focused on your dissertation right now and having that conversation with your advisor is gonna be really good so that you can focus on getting more data instead of focusing on writing a dissertation only to find out that it's not gonna be enough. But a lot of times, that's actually not the case. Usually, once you're ready to write your dissertation, you generally have enough work to go into that dissertation. But it's our constant fear that we're not worthy of a PhD or, or a master's or whatever your degree is, or we, don't ha we haven't done enough work. And as long as we keep letting that circulate and not just go into our advisors and saying, is this enough? Is this what you want me to write? then we're always going to keep having that question and it's always going to be something holding us back. And so being able to have your list of chapters and getting it approved by your advisors can be so helpful in being able to actually move forward in a timely fashion and actually getting everything done you need to get done and feeling like you're actually um, going to be successful when you're going into the submission of your dissertation or your defense. The next action step I'm going to talk about is actually checking formatting guidelines for your dissertation. And this is something not often talked about in the dissertation space, but the form, the format of your dissertation is usually highly regulated. And so your graduate studies of your university is most likely going to have rules about how you can format your dissertation. And so if you start out just by writing your entire dissertation, you're actually going to make it more complicated for you because you're going to have to go back and reformat everything in your dissertation to fit the formatting guidelines. And so if you before you even start your dissertation, it's actually going to be really good if you check your grad studies um, department to figure out what their guideline what their formatting guidelines are and also checking your own department's guidelines and your advisor's guidelines. And so you don't just want to check one because there might be some ambiguity in one where there is not in a in a different formatting guidelines. And so in my case, my advisor had created a dissertation template, essentially, of how you should format your dissertation. So I wrote my entire dissertation in this dissertation template. And when I got ready to submit it, I was so excited because I was like, you know what? You know, I know that it's right. I wrote it in this dissertation template. It looks awesome. And I submitted it to grad studies and grad studies came back and gave me this whole list of everything that was wrong in the formatting of my dissertation. And so it took days extra trying to reformat everything to fit grad studies guidelines because they had changed them from when my advisor had created that template. And so to save yourself that time, go ahead and make a checklist of the guidelines that you're gonna need to follow per your grad studies department, per your own home department, and per your advisor. Make that checklist so that you know how to format everything in your dissertation before you even start writing. So that once you start writing, you're writing on, a, on an already formatted template and you're not going to have to go back and change things later because the guidelines for how to format it can include what your title page looks like, what front matter looks like, where you can put figures, does figures get embedded in the text, or are they standalone? That can actually be dependent on what your grad studies department says is okay. This also includes margins, and so generally for a dissertation, you're going to have 
um, increased margins on the left hand side of your dissertation so that it can be bound. And so imagine if you've created your figures on um, single pages or even embedded into your text and then you also created margins that were typical for a normal paper and now you're getting ready to submit and now you found that not only do you have to maybe take your figures out of the text and they have to be on their own pages, but you also have to move your margins over. Now you're literally gonna have to spend so much more time combing back through your entire dissertation because once you move the margins over, it's going to mess up all of your formatting for all the rest of your dissertation. So being able to actually have this done ahead of time and be working on a form that you know is correct because you did the research and you're not relying on what someone else is telling you is actually going to save you so much time in the end. And it also gives you something that you know you're starting off on the right foot whenever you do go to start writing your dissertation. The last step that I wanna talk about is knowing what you're going to say in each of your chapters before you ever start writing your chapters. And this is a part that I think a lot of people leave out and it leaves incredible. This is a part that I feel like a lot of people leave out of their process and it makes it incredibly difficult to actually create a cohesive chapter. Because they don't know where they're going next in their chapter. They just know they need to write their dissertation. So they sit down and stumble through writer's block, attempting to write these chapters out. And then you read it and it's so disjointed. It, it's like they're going from Venus to Mars and then back to Earth. And so actually knowing what you're going to say is going to be really important so that when you're writing your chapter, it's going to make it so much easier and take so much less time when you're actually writing. And then it's actually going to come off as a better product. Now, the way that I typically figure out what I'm going to say in my chapters is I actually create what's called a figure outline prior to ever writing my chapters. And a figure outline is essentially just all of the um, figures that you're going to have in your paper. And these are generally considered figure panels. So it's when you're sometimes putting in multiple figures into a single um, actual figure um, that would be considered like figure one in your in your paper. And so figure one may contain four different graphs on it. And that's kind of what your figure outline is, is actually putting those figure panels together and then putting them in the order that you're, that you're going to be talking about them. And so what this also does is it means that you're not starting to write your chapter until you really have your results in because that's what your entire chapter should be based on. You shouldn't be writing introduction when you have no idea what the results are gonna say because if you don't know what the results are gonna say and you don't know what your story is going to be, then you have no idea what you're writing in your introduction. So you could write an entire introduction for a paper, get the results and realize, well, that's not the story I'm gonna tell and now you have to completely rewrite it. And so having a figure outline will tell you what your story is going to be. And I'm going to talk um, in later episodes about how to actually craft a story out of data. But you actually need a story that you're going to follow for each of your chapters. And so that, that is what your figure outline is giving you is actually being able to know what your different um what your different parts of your stories are, which is going to end up being different sections in your chapter. And so once you have your figure outline, you basically have the outline for your results and discussions chapters. But then you also know what the key points you need to hit on in your introduction and method chapters are going to be. So th the other really great thing about having a figure outline or knowing what you're going to say in that chapter is it actually makes you more excited to write the chapter because one, you're not dreading it because you don't know how to do it. 
And two, you it kind of like sparks up that scientist in you again, where you actually want to dive into, you know, explaining the data and explaining why it's cool. Because generally, when you have a figure outline, you know, you're like, oh, this is really cool data, and I want to share it with people. And when you get more into that mindset, it's a better mindset for actually writing your chapter, and you're going to be able to write your chapter faster. Versus when you're in the mindset of, I don't know what we're saying here, I'm just looking up a bunch of papers, and I'm going to mesh it together, and then I'm going to randomly talk about data. It's you're writing it disjointed, so it's going to come off disjointed, but it's also going to be incredibly stressful trying to write it because it's going to be frustrating because you don't know where you're going next and you don't know why it's exciting yet. And so I definitely recommend to everyone to actually either create a figure outline or create something that tells you what you're going to say in that chapter and what the point of that chapter is. So I hope that these three action steps gives you a good starting point for how to get started on your dissertation. And I wanted to leave you with the thought of the dissertation process is so much more than just writing and defending. There's so much work that needs to go into it that that's not the work that's generally acknowledged. And this includes the action steps I talked about today doing these three action steps isn't actually writing or defending your dissertation, but to me, they're actually simpler than sitting down and writing. And there, you know a little bit better how to do it. You know how to go about it. And so you feel like you're accomplishing something because the dissertation process is so much bigger and you are actually accomplishing something on your dissertation, even though it's not actually writing your dissertation, but it's going to make it so much better in the end to have all of this figured out prior to writing it. So I want you to let me know in the comments which of these action steps you are going to take this week to get started on your dissertation. Are you going to create your list of chapters and talk with your advisor and make sure that that's approved? Are you going to check out the formatting requirements of your grad studies department, home department, and advisor? Or are you going to um, make sure that you know what's going to be in each chapter, um, whether that's through figure outlines or some other method? And before we go, I want to remind you guys um, to register for the dissertation workshop that's going to be on November 12th that's going to help you dive deeper into this and get more insights on how to write your dissertation without frustration or uh, getting burned out in the process. And I will see you guys on the next episode.